So Dave, uh, an actual real client, real e visa case, uh, name has been changed to protect the identity. Um, he's a Canadian citizen, and he first reached out to us uh, inquiring about whether his business idea could qualify for the E2 visa. Uh, Dave is a business consultant by profession. He wanted to establish a pool cleaning business. He thought that was uh, a tremendous uh, opportunity in the state of Florida because of the weather there. And there was a lot of uh, untapped uh, a market for that service in Florida. So he was really excited about it. And especially because it's a service business, there was not a lot of investment required. There was no super expensive equipment or supplies, and there's no retail space to create. So it's a relatively low cost, simple business to start up. In addition, 50, 60,000 US dollars. And so we get from analysis that you know, E2 visa requires that the applicant uh, create a, a viable, credible business that will create multiple meaningful jobs for American workers and invest a substantial amount of money to create that business. And that an applicant has the credible ability to uh, develop a business and achieve the financial goals laid out in the business plan. Uh, the immigration officer has to believe that, especially for a startup where the future potential is based on a leap of faith, a bit of speculative situation, that the applicant has the right qualification, background, skills, training, or experience to make the business plan realistic. But given that Dave never ran this kind of business in his life, um, there's a real potential concern that whether he actually has the credibility to make this kind of business successful. Sure, he has general business experience, but the immigration officer looking at a brand new startup business with no history of financial performance, little or no job creation, may have serious doubts about his ability um, to make this business successful. So what Dave, based on my advice, what he did was he took uh, a number of high-level training course specifically on how to create and operate a pool cleaning service. And he found a training company uh, with an owner and a teacher who has more than 30 years of expertise in pool cleaning in the tree business and have provided a lot of training to other successful pool cleaning business. So based on my advice, he went ahead and engaged this training program and completed it, got certification. So we were able to solve the uh, concern of whether he has the credible skills and experience to operate this kind of business through this uh, pivoting of getting the necessary training by experts before he applied for E2 visa. In addition, he was thinking, Bob, he asked me, Bobby, and really, you know what? I could probably set up this business and get it up and running with 50, 60,000 US dollars. And that's, he was like, at that point, that's all really all the money he had. So I can convey to him that, sure, it's possible to get E2 visa with that amount of money because the E2 visa law doesn't specify a minimum investment amount. But the reality is, if the business is a small startup business with no track record or job creation, the investment amount becomes a, a, a very important factor in the officer's decision making and in deciding whether to take that leap of faith in trusting the potential success of the business in large part based on that investment amount. So I explained to Dave that although 50, 60,000 in reality, could be more than sufficient to start up a pool cleaning business. But from a point of view of an immigration officer, that is very low for a brand new startup service business. And that could create significant doubt on the viability of the business. So I highly recommend that we secure additional funding to boost investment to at least six figures, at least 100,000, so that that figure creates a positive impression for the immigration officer. Now, one of the things that he did that was frustrating, Dave, is that he doesn't need to spend 100000 He said, I could, Bobby, I can uh, get this up and running with about maybe $50,000 in expenditure. I'm good to go. That would be sufficient. I don't want to waste money unnecessarily. What I was able to explain to him is that cash reserve committed to the business account. You can count that cash reserve 
what we call working capital and business count towards the total E2 investment calculation. So even if Dave is investing a hundred thousand, he certainly does not have to spend a hundred thousand. In fact, immigration official doesn't want a startup business to spend every dime it has on business startup. Then there's a real concern as to how is the business going to operate if it has no working capital. So in fact, it's a, a positive to have a reasonable amount of working capital. So I explained to Dave that the investment is a balance, is a combination of actual expenditure to create a viable business, as well as a reasonable amount of working capital committed to the business account to pay for operating expenses till the business grow to the point where it makes enough money to be able to sustain itself. That, um, that presentation of the investment will give the immigration officer the confidence that the investment is spread and, and structured in a way that sets up the business for success. Oh, Dave, um, uh, follow my advice and he secured additional funding, uh, for gift and, and or personal loan from family and friends. And of course I gave him advice on structuring the gift and personal loans in the right way to satisfy E2 visa. In combination with his own savings, he was able to demonstrate a total investment of a little bit over a hundred thousand. Uh, with uh, substantial use of that money. And uh, he uh, wanted to strengthen his case as much as possible. Dave actually went ahead and hired his initial employee, a uh, pool cleaning technician. Uh, his, uh, his, his employee was able to secure some customers and start servicing South Pool routes before we apply for each of visa. What this did was help demonstrate that the startup business is actively operating. And it's a real business. It's not a speculative startup that hasn't even begun to operate. It showed the immigration officer, this is a real business. After he created business, what he did was travel back to Canada and he set up online lead generation marketing, uh, such that he was able to actually, while he was physically outside of us, he is uh, legally allowed to manage and operate his business remotely from outside of the us before he gets the E2 visa. If it's possible and the business can get going and start operating through remote, uh, management by the owner in the home country, then that will strengthen the case because it's a real active business. It's not a speculative startup. The only restriction is that the owner cannot work, uh, or manage the business while in the United States before getting an E2 visa. That's the only restriction. They did all that. Um, then, uh, we went ahead and. Uh, prepared and submitted his E2B application to Toronto U.S. consulate. And, uh, I prepared him for the interview so that he's ready to explain this business, even though he's never done it before, we were able to demonstrate he is genuine, uh, skills, ability, knowledge, because of extensive training and the credibility of the, uh, the coaching service that he got. So it, it establishes credibility to manage and operate a business for which he never did, uh, in the past. And, uh, because of the working capital contribution, and we have it would have boosted his investment into six figures, uh, with a substantial use of that money, uh, on the vehicle, on equipment, on the legal business creation cost, as well as, uh, marketing costs. He spent some money on website as well as advertising to generate leads. And because of his hiring of the initial pool cleaning technician, we were able to demonstrate job creation. And because of his marketing efforts and, uh, generating some initial customers, we were able to show the immigration officer, these officer that this business truly is capable of acquiring customers. And altogether, we were able to demonstrate a very strong E2 visa case that resulted in a fast E2 visa approval. I think it was E2 visa was approved roughly around two months, uh, after we submitted application to Toronto. And, uh, uh, Dave, uh, shared with me that his interview was easy and smooth officer was basically satisfied with the documentation he presented and asked him little to no question, approve him the each of these for a maximum five year period. And, uh, he was able to get his passport back with the each of these with a few days. And now he's living in Florida with his family running his new business. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it helpful, please consider liking, commenting, or subscribing. We appreciate your support 
and look forward to bringing you more valuable tips about the E2 visa.